Hey everybody, Mike Naso here with an update on the tropics. It's been a long time since I spoke to you, but that's because we had a very, very inactive July and the first half of August. But it is August 16th, which means we're getting closer and closer to when that switch turns on. Boom. August 20th, August 30th, around that time frame. You can see this is climatology, and this is all the way through 2020, normally when we get tropical storms and hurricanes. And you can see we are right here, and we are going to have a huge increase all the way up to the climatological peak, which is September 10th. So we're looking at a La Nina hurricane season, and uh, very, very similar to 1999. Now, I want to do a talk about the tropics right now before I touch on 1999. And uh, you can see out there we do have a wave leaving Africa, and we're going to start to watch this area more and more as we get closer to September. But we do have another feature down here in the Southwest Caribbean that could soon become an invest area, and that looks to move northwestward into the Bay of Campeche and the Gulf of Mexico. You can see it closer here, not looking all that bad. It's kind of got some sort of low pressure with it, and it's moving over the Yucatan and Central America, bringing heavy rainfall. But that could become a tropical depression or a storm and head towards northern Mexico or possibly Texas. However, just the other day we had that tropical disturbance move into Texas. Had that thing had another 36 hours, it would have been a hurricane. So the Gulf is primed, and a lot of this area here, you can see the wind shear in the Atlantic, is getting more and more favorable. So even though it's been slow, that does occur in uh, La Nina years to where sometimes the amount of storms is kind of backloaded to late September, October. I remember when I was uh, 10, 11 years old, 98, 99, uh, we had Hurricane George. That didn't even develop until mid-September. You know, Hurricane Floyd took aim at Florida September 13th. So we're talking weeks away from when we could really be in the thick of it. So anything's possible, but right now looking at what we're seeing, this is the GFS model. Now this is as of 18Z. And you can see, first of all, it develops a system in the Gulf of Mexico in the longer range that becomes a hurricane, a strong hurricane very near the Texas-Mexico border. But look at this wave off of Africa. Boom. This thing becomes a major hurricane, and with that setup, look at this ridge of high pressure above it and a weakness getting closed off here, another ridge to the north. This thing is taking dead aim. That is a dangerous looking hurricane. Now, it's just the GFS model, and it's a long way out. You're talking by Labor Day, but that is an indication that we could have a serious storm off Africa in the next couple of weeks. Our first hurricane, and potentially our first major hurricane, to say nothing of what brews in the Gulf. Because this first system we're watching, that is not what this model is showing in the Gulf later. This is a second system. So, the name list, as we've seen, we already had Alex, we had Bonnie, which uh, became a major hurricane in the Pacific, and then we had Colin near South Carolina. We are still waiting on Danielle, and Earl, and Fiona. So we may see all three of those storms before Labor Day. Even though it seems impossible right now with how quiet the tropics have been, you can see Africa is lighting up, and these waves are going to be moving off, and one of these could be a potential future hurricane in the Atlantic. These are the ensemble models, the spaghetti plots. Look at the GFS ensembles. Not looking good in the longer range. Again, take it with a grain of salt, but we weren't seeing anything a few weeks ago. Look at this, strong hurricanes taking aim at the Bahamas and southeastern U.S. in the longer range. The European ensemble, same thing, right off Africa, boom, starts to develop, moves on off. So I wanted to do this update to kind of give everybody a heads up that in the next uh, five to ten days, we're really going to see things light up. Unless it's a complete bust, uh, we should see some hurricanes in the next few weeks. And it uh, looks like, based on some of the long-range models, they would be threats to land, potentially. If we get that GFS thing, I mean, that's like an Irma setup, where that thing's way off Africa and ends up moving straight towards uh, the Bahamas and all that. Forget about it. So we're going to watch it very carefully. Now, I mentioned 1999. That is an analog year. So what the people at Colorado State University do... Uh, the professor, uh, Phil Klotzbach, great guy, he does his annual hurricane forecast multiple times a year. He looks at years where the setup and the waters and the pattern and the La Nina, El Nino, match them all up and see what hurricane season was most similar. 
and 1999 keeps coming up as a very good analog year. Now, for those of you who are too young to remember 1999, or you might not have been born, I was tracking in 99. We had almost nothing until late August when Brett developed. Brett was a very dangerous hurricane. Came from a similar area as that wave we're watching over the Yucatan into the Bay of Campeche. Originally, it looked like it could become a hurricane going to Mexico. This thing sat over the Gulf, became a monster Category 4, and took aim at Corpus Christi. It was the strongest hurricane in the Gulf since Opal in 95 at the time, and it looked like it was going to be the worst hurricane to hit the United States since Andrew in 92. It weakened to a Category 3 before landfall, and you can see it was a very impressive major hurricane landfall. But it hit Kennedy County, which is one of the least populated counties anywhere on the Gulf or Atlantic coast. It like damaged the sign of a Walmart, and that was it. And so it's a forgotten hurricane, and the name Brett is still on a future name list because they didn't retire the name. But that was a dangerous major hurricane in late August. Then came Hurricane Dennis, a Category 2 that scraped up the Carolinas. Then, of course, Hurricane Floyd, a colossal beast, borderline Category 5, roared over the Bahamas, seriously threatened Florida, caused at the time the largest peacetime evacuation in U.S. history, closed Disney World for I think the first time ever. And then it moved up the East Coast, slammed into North Carolina, and the flooding was so devastating that dozens and dozens of people died. It was a very disastrous hurricane at the time, the third costliest behind Andrew and Hugo. So that was Floyd. Then we had Hurricane Irene in October cut across Florida as a Category 1 but caused a lot of problems. Hurricane Jose in October come into the U.S. Virgin Islands as a Category 2. And in November we had Wrong Way Lenny. Lenny was a powerful Category 4, but it traveled in the opposite direction. It traveled from west to east and it hit areas of St. Croix and the U.S. Virgin Islands as a devastating Category 4. Could have been even worse than it was, but Lenny was retired. So that was 1999. Now think about it. We have already had Colin. At that time in 99, at this time, we hadn't even had the beef storm. So if 99 is an analog year, I do not want to see what could be in store for us. So we're going to watch this all very, very carefully. You can see this time in 1992, 30 years ago, Tropical Depression 3 formed in the Atlantic. And it didn't have a, a good life expectancy, but it ended up surviving, and it was a disastrous Category 5, Hurricane Andrew. To this day, Andrew is still probably the most violent hurricane damage I've ever seen. And you know, here on these updates and even before that, we've seen a lot of violent storms, but Andrew really chewed up Southeast Florida. Now, since we know it was a Category 5, a storm like Andrew should only hit that area of South Florida maybe once every 50 years. And it's been 30 years, so we could hope that it's still going to be a while, but if you're in Southeast Florida this time of year, overlook your hurricane plans. So that'll do it for this look at the tropics and a look back at 1999 and 92. Uh, good analog here, 1999, and uh, if that holds true, we're going to see some serious action. And uh, it could happen soon with the system near the Gulf of Mexico, followed by a system off Africa. So I'm Mike Nasa with the latest on the tropics. Stay tuned as things heat up in the Atlantic.